All right, I want to talk about vertical and adding experiments to your vertical project. All right, uh, what we're looking at here is an example vertical project. Um, it's for a, a proceedings for a cognitive science paper. I put it into a vertical project. We can look at the manuscript. We can look at supplementary files showing the R code I used to run the, in, uh, the simulations, things like that. Uh, this paper didn't happen to have any experiments in it, so it wouldn't make sense to have a tab for experiments. But wouldn't it be cool if uh, when you, say, went to download a paper with open data and open materials, you could go to a vertical project website like this, and there'd be a tab there for experiments, and you could not only access the source code for the experiments, um, but you could also try them out because maybe they would be web ready and they could run in a browser and these days there's lots of uh, great libraries out there and ways to make behavioral experiments online so if you're doing that you can put it in your vertical project no problem let's check out how we would do that just briefly i'm going to make some other videos that go into some of the details about programming behavioral experiments uh, this one is just a five minute or how if you did that already, you could put it in your vertical project. So what I have here is GitHub Basics 2. We were working off this the other day. There's not much going on in this, just some of the templates. And when I initialized this project, we can check out what that looked like. You scroll down, want to make a new vertical project. I didn't click this one, Initialize Experiments. Now this option uh, is clickable and it will load up the JS psych library that, uh, to get you started with a space in your vertical project to program an experiment. Uh, we also have it set up so that if you want to add these modules in after you've already made your vertical project, you can do that too. So uh, for example, we can initialize JS psych or initialize JS psych R. I'm going to do the second one and let's see what happens. Okay, we get a new folder called experiments. So this is where our experiments are going to live. And uh, JS PsychR is something I'll go into later, but basically, well, let's just quickly look at it. We can do JS PsychR. Here it is. It's an R package I wrote. It basically allows you to write in R Markdown. Um, write your JS psych experiments in R Markdown. And this is kind of fun because you can knit your RMD file and debug your experiment in the viewer pane. And uh, for me, I like to work in R, so this keeps everything in there. Uh, there's lots of other options. You don't need to do this. Um, check out Danielle Navarro's uh, sim similar packages for JS psych in R, and or just go use JS psych. It's, uh, it's pretty great. Okay. So what do we have over here in our experiments folder? Uh, we've got a JS psych R template, and this has folder for experiment one. Um, the main code for running the experiment is inside this experiment folder. And we have an index.rmd file. This is the R markdown source code for the experiment. Um, so it's kind of got some combos where here's an R code chunk, here's an R code chunk. Uh, use these code chunks to create various data frames and stimulus sets using R, which I find convenient. And then I pass it to JavaScript because we can also have JavaScript code chunks in the same document. So when I knit the but uh, when I knit this document, I'm actually going to create uh, an index.html document that runs the experiment, and here it is. So like I said, you can debug the experiment right in RStudio. Um, cool. So here's the source code to generate the experiment. Here's the file that runs the experiment, and it's all in a organized place in your vertical project and in the experiments folder. So if someone was looking for where your source code was, it would be right here. But another benefit to this is that we can 
because the experiment happens to be programmed for a web browser, we can actually share it on our vertical project website. And there's a couple ways to do that. I'm going to show a way to do it manually. Um, so if we look in the docs folder, there is no experiments folder yet. We haven't recompiled. So let's do that. We'll run vertical build vertical. And this is going to create an experiment folder for us because it's going to copy the folder experiments into the docs folder. So we should see that now. Docs, experiments. Yeah, so it does copy the experiments folder in. However, at this point, um, the way we have set up that function, um, it doesn't uh, copy anything into this folder, it just makes it for you. Uh, so we have to do a little bit of things by hand. So we have to choose what it is we want to put in there. And I'm going to choose to put the contents of this folder in there. So I'm going to copy this to the docs experiments folder. I'm going to save it as experiments. And the reason I'm doing this is because this folder contains the HTML, oh, let's go in there, for running the experiment. So at the end of the day, when we push all this stuff up to GitHub, we'll be able to serve this as a website and, and people could run the experiment for themselves. And you can test that out locally. Uh, if we, so let me just describe the, the kind of problem that we're facing. We need to hook this content up to our website. And we're going to use package down because package down builds the website. Um, we're going to use the build home function. This uh, builds the front page. And our goal is to add an experiments tab wh where we could link to a version of a runnable experiment. And it doesn't take too long to do that. We're going to edit the package down.yml file. This template file shows you a little bit how this works. Um, and for example, it's set up so that an experiments tab could appear on the left side of the nav bar, but there is no experiments uh, object here. So let's make one. We'll copy posters and call this experiments to make sure that this word is the same as that one. Now we get to define the text that will appear in the tab. So we're going to say sample experiment. Um, this is set up to have drop down menu style uh, items under this tab. So we could say Stroop experiment. And now we define the path to the HTML file for this content. Now that is located in docs, experiments, experiments, index.html. So we would just write, um, we don't need to write docs because that's uh, the, the root folder. So we write experiments, experiments, index.html. Okay, now that we've done that, when we rebuild the front page, uh, we'll have an experiments tab with an option. And if you click this, it will run the experiment for you. And that was uh, the thing we, or I thought was pretty cool about uh, adding this to a vertical project. Um, <clears throat> all right, uh, in some future videos, we'll look at diving into JS Psych R probably, and how you could use R Markdown to write JS Psych experiments. Um, coming up in a future video. Mm -hmm.